Good evening, fiends. Welcome to another episode of Sinister Parlor Podcast. I'm Zombie Barbie, and tonight I have my amazing co-host, Christopher Inlow. You just wave. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, hi. Hey. It's all silent. <laughs> and we have a very, 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 very special guest tonight. I'm super, super excited. I'll, I'll let you say it, though, Christopher. Uh, well, we have Jeffrey Riddick here with us. And Jeffrey, as, as you all know, as, is the creator of one of the greatest horror franchises on the planet. It's called uh, Final Destination. <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> He's done a lot of work as well, but uh, he definitely, uh, like... That's going to be whole... on my tombstone, so yeah. <laughs> It'll say Final Destination. Right. Yeah, <laughs> Final Destination there. <laughs> Oh, so how are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Just, you know, like everybody else kind of stressed out right now, but um, with the coronavirus thing going on, but hopefully that'll pass soon. Um, I hope so. so just working, you know, it's just, you know, good, good thing about being a writer is you can do that anytime. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's good. So last yeah. night I watched the final wish. Oh, cool. That, that was a lot of fun. That was good. I remember um, Lynn Shea putting on her Instagram story that she was super excited to film it. So it was yeah. awesome to see it completed. It was, it was good. Yeah, and I, I saw you. First... <laughs> oh, yeah. Being the mean landlord. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I got the opportunity. I saw that in the theater. So uh... awesome. Yeah, it had, a, it had a limited release, which was great. But no, it was great. That was the first time I got to, I, I've known Lynn for ever but it was the first time I got to work with her so that was amazing and then also having Tony Todd back um, you know working with him was great and Michael Welch was actually in the Day of the Dead remake so it was kind of a family reunion kind of movie Um, it was really nice that's cool and then yeah I watched um, and then today final I mean I've seen them all already but I wanted to rewatch just a little bit so Final Destination 2 because that's one of my favorite from the franchise um but yeah, that's my favorite. Favorite. <laughs> is that your favorite <laughs> yeah yeah no it's my favorite i like i love to sounds good the um, finale of final destination how it all twisted back uh in the the fifth one yeah and it went back to the first like blew me away that yes, i was that, not expecting that yeah i wish i could take credit for that craig perry the producer who's been like the godfather of the series he, from the beginning, he's just really taken care of it um, and made sure that the franchises were, you know, the sequels were strong. Um, that was his idea. Like, you know, um, so I give him mad props for that because that was really a smart way to, to do five. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, when the second you see him on the plane, you're like, no, no. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was fantastic. It, it's a great series. That, that's one of the, uh, you know, when you're doing a lot of independent stuff, not everybody knows about every, and like everybody knows A Nightmare on Elm Street, everybody knows Friday the 13th, everybody knows Halloween, but you never know what, what all people know and what's out there. I know a lot of stuff because of, you know, I've been watching this stuff forever. Everybody knows Final Destination. Everybody. Everybody is familiar with that film. So mm-hmm. like I talked yeah. to a young lady today and uh like i didn't she's not even the kind of person that i considered that would like re- be really big on horror movies and she was like final destination that's one of my favorite movies and i was like well shit there you go yeah it's um <laughs> it's been really cool it's it's definitely found its way into the kind of public zeitgeist so um just as a horror fan that's like something that you know i'm super grateful for just you know growing up loving these kind of films it's really nice to you know have a film that has really sparked a chord with people. So that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Even younger kids are watching them too. Like my daughter being 16. I mean, she's watched all of them. You know, I love when, when people come up to me at conventions and they're like, I was 14 when the first one came, or I was like four when this third one came out and I saw it and I'm like, you're young bastards. (laughs) (laughs) But it's really cool. It is cool. It's a fun franchise, you know, like that's, what we set out to create was something that was just a fun, you know, scary and fun horror movie um, mm-hmm. that had a little bit, you know, had something to say too. So I think we, it was really cool. 
Definitely makes you think. Um, I was flying back from Seattle and, you know, I mean, you're always worried about the planes or the logging trucks. Those are like the two major yeah. things people are freaked out about. So, you know, like where you, I don't know if you get anxiety, but you know, like when you get it and it kind of like you're, you're not hearing right and everything's kind of buzzing around you. So I'm waiting to get on the plane and I'm talking to my friend he's like, Oh, it's like final destination shit. I'm like, fuck you. Like, why are you saying that when I'm getting on the plane? So then I'm in line and this girl's on the phone. She's like, it's kind of like final destination. I was like, I'm going to (laughs) die. This this is not good. Two people just said this. (laughs) I just had a premonition. Neither of you will ever die in a plane crash. Thank you. Okay, good. I like (laughs) that. Don't worry. I like that. (laughs) Yeah. I I think I might actually get on a plane now. (laughs) But watch out for log trucks. Those are sneaky. Right. That that actually, uh, my uncle uh, the logs flew off of the truck and it like crippled my uncle. Oh my so god! That actually did happen to him. I mean, he's he's alive and walking yeah. in the cane now, but that did Jeez. that did happen to him. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, that's scary. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Gosh. So the, I like the, the movie final... stuff. I don't like the real life stuff when it really happens. Yeah. Definitely. What, were you... what is the so? What inspired the final wish? Where did that come from? Um, you know what, I, I've always liked Jen, you know, and had wanted to do something with the Jen. Um, but I also, just from my kind of love of Nightmare on Elm Street and, you know, just horror films, I, I always love to see how, you, you know, kind of dig into the psychology a little bit of, like, what can happen. Um, you know, if you have a wish and it comes true, like, what would you do? Mm-hmm. Um, and I like the idea, you know, of, you know, because I wrote the, I wrote a tree of, a treatment for this and I um, had some uh, two screenwriting uh, friends Bill Halfen and Jonathan Doyle write the script of me so it was a, it was a collaboration on the script phase but uh, the story I wrote was really you know I I based the character Aaron a little bit on me because um, you know I, I left after college I kind of took off and went to New York and LA and you know my mom and sister stayed back in Kentucky and my mom, you know, I would go visit her and, you know, call her all the time, but there was always this kind of underlying guilt that I kind of went off in my sister and her state in Kentucky. Um, so I wanted to kind of address that a little bit, um, that kind of guilt of like, you know, not being there for a loved one when they, when they, you know, just kind of that guilt. Um, and then also just having some fun with the wish stuff. So there's like deep stuff, (laughs) <laughs> like yeah. personal stuff that I that's in there, but then you know I wanted to have fun with the with the gin stuff without it being too, you know I wanted the lead character not to know what was going on so that the wishes kind of pro- progressively got worse. Mm-hmm. Um, so nice. And, yeah, uh, really I'm gonna give, you know, and yeah, and Timothy Woodard is a director. You know, I definitely have to give him a lot of props on that. He he'd been hitting me up for a long time on Facebook. Just been like, hey, you got anything? And I'm like, no, because I'm I I was really busy a lot of the times. Um, but he finally sent me like um, a trailer for one of his movies, and I was like, holy crap, this looks amazing. Um, so then he goes, now do you have anything? And I was like, well, Aww. yeah, I have this, this script. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> so actually, I, I, I so I met him, and then I think we were shooting in like two and a half months. It was like something crazy, like because we sat down for our first meeting with them and I'm like, when do you want to shoot this? He's like, you know, I don't even know if it was that long. I think it was, it was a really short time because he had a slot open up. I was like, you're kidding me. And he's like, no. And I'm like, oh crap. Usually I have to wait for like five years for somebody to make a movie. Wow. Um, so, but he's just a really smart director. He's, he gets the movie in his head, which is, um, I've never seen a director that works like him. Like he just visualizes the movie in his head. Um, and he works with um, the same cinematographer, Pablo and, um, they have a really good like rapport together. So Timothy just basically go, shows up on set and is like, "Here's what you know. Here's what we're doing." And um, hey. he's he's definitely like a a mad genius. Oh, that's awesome. See, it was like meant to be. He didn't make yep. you wait. He had a slot right yeah. then. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. No, we, just right? a, we just we just finished a movie um, called The Call that has a Lynn Shea in it as well. I'm um, in Tobin oh, Bell, so it's going to be their first on-screen pairing. Oh, cool. Um, nice. Yeah. I can't really tell you about the plot, but oh. it, it's very good. <laughs> oh, exciting. When is it very supposed good. to be done? Um, it is done. Oh, okay. is fast. Yeah, we, he shot it, and it's um, edited. They, they may be doing some music sound stuff still, but um, I... 
I think it's done. So we'll see. We'll, I'll definitely keep everybody updated when it's going to come out and when more information about it um, can be released. But it's, um, it was really amazing to see like Tobin and Lynn together. They are, they play a couple and they're just amazing. And we have a great cast all around, but um, you know, obviously they're Lynn and Tobin. <laughs> yeah. They're icons. They're awesome. Oh, that's so exciting. I can't oh, wait. Did the, uh, the, the connection with Lynn, did that come from a nightmare in Elm street? Um, I definitely had watched her in that stuff, but I, I actually was friends with her. Bob Shea is the one who wrote me when I was like, you know, a kid in Kentucky. And, um, you know, start, we started being pen pals when I was like 14. And then when I was 19 and moved to New York, he got me an internship at New Line Cinema. Um, I read that. So I actually wow. worked in New York. Yeah, I worked in New York out of New Line. Um, or out of New York at New Line for 11 years. And so wow. um, Lynn was LA based, but I kept seeing her in stuff. You know, we did something about Mary. You know, she was in a lot of great stuff. I <laughs> Mad. She's hysterical. <laughs> um, so I always knew who she was, but I didn't get to the chance. I didn't have the chance to meet her until I came out to LA, but I'd always heard about her and saw her work and was a big fan of hers. And then I got to meet her and she's just like, and, um, she's just an amazing woman, like very, you know, warm and caring and very passionate about every role she takes. Like she doesn't, she never just, I don't care how big or small the film is. She never is one of these people that just is like, I'm showing up for a paycheck. Like she, mm-hmm she really like puts her she really puts a lot of work into all of her stuff and you got to respect that and you know somebody and she's had such a great career and she's just so mm-hmm. down to earth I just love her to death yeah she I I love her and she's like every role she does is amazing I really liked her in Insidious that was one of my favorite yeah. favorite ones that she did but I mean I mean even yeah. remember Detroit Rock City I mean she's good in there that's too franchise. that's <laughs> like yeah, no, Insidious is like her franchise. It's pretty awesome. You know? mm-hmm. yeah. I honestly, I didn't even uh, realize, I haven't seen a Nightmare on Elm Street in so long. And uh, I didn't even realize she was in it until I saw the credits. Mm-hmm. And I was like, whoa, hold and on. She's a teacher. Yeah, mm-hmm. And she's yeah. the teacher. And uh, <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of things that, that I noticed at watching it this time around that I didn't, that I didn't recognize before. Which is uh, which is neat, and of course, you know, we when you when you start watching this, I started looking up all these different things on YouTube as well, and uh, you know, just the little little fun facts that you may not know. So, yeah, there's a there's <laughs> hang a lot on of for a minute. Uh, hang on, <laughs> you shutting your mom out. I can't stop laughing. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I I don't. <laughs> I'm trying to. My like, mother got you know, very sick in October. <laughs> And I moved back into the house. <laughs> You're all shutting the door. <laughs> Did you see that? You know, to help take care of my mom. So, yeah. I knew what was going on. <laughs> you might have missed it all together. I don't I think you saw it. Chances are she's probably in her pajamas. Oh, so it looked it may have looked rude of me to shut the door, but she would have been absolutely embarrassed. Oh, that's a if she opened up the door and there's my mother standing there in her in her pajamas. Oh, that's awesome. No, I, have, yeah, I have a roommate and I, and I and I told her I was like, "Yeah, I'm doing a podcast in the living room." So, so yeah. Well, you may be thinking like a right. figure go by. It's not a good. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was trying to hold it in, but <laughs> okay, go ahead. No, no. It's, uh... It's fine, but yeah, yeah. Oh God, I moved no. back in with my mother in October because she got very, very sick. So I hope she's doing better. She is. She is. Good. She's doing a lot. She's doing a lot better. But you know, with the, with all the stuff with the coronavirus and everything going on, you gotta, especially the the elderly. You know, you want to mm-hmm. really watch out. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. it's been crazy. But anyways, let's all right. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, mom! <laughs> Her little head's all peeking through, and he's shoving the door. <laughs> oh man! Okay. <laughs> She'll be thanking me for that. Yeah, you know. Um, <laughs> so I was gonna ask you, what gave you the idea for Final Destination? Is are any of those things in there something that you fear? Like any of those deaths or any? I don't. Like where? I mean, where I think. The, you know, the, I mean, the, the first movie kind of got inspired, I got inspired by an article that I read when I was on a plane about a woman who's 
was on her, I think it was a vacation or honeymoon. I can't even remember, but her mom had told her not to take the flight back home. She was on cause she had a bad feeling about it. And the woman switched flights in the plane that she was on crash. So that's where the seed of the idea came from, but I didn't put the story together. Um, I think the, my favorite is the log trek stuff for the second one, because I grew up in Kentucky and, um, you know, when I first had, you know, pitched my story for uh, New Line for the sequel, they liked the story a lot. But, you know, Craig Perry was like, this, oh, it was going to be a hotel fire. And he's like, oh, we need something bigger than that. We need something bigger than a hotel fire. Um, and then I was driving home to Kentucky and uh, got behind one of those log trucks and pulled over and freaked out. And then I called Craig up and I'm like, what about a log truck? Got an idea. Like, yeah. <laughs> so that was one of those like super inspired kind of moments that, you know, I think with the execution that David Ellis did in the film, I think it's, you know, it's, it's, it's my favorite opening of a lot of, I can't scream, you know, I love Scream and Nightmare on Elm Street, but I think that that opening is one of the best in horror films mm-hmm. is in a top 10 list. Let's just say, definitely. <laughs> um, cause I think it was executed so well. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, so I was reading a thing. Were you 11 or 14 when you wrote, Something about uh, Nightmare oh, on Elm 14, Street. 14. 14 when I wrote, yeah, wrote a prequel. And people have asked me about it because I didn't think, you know, you know, when you're that young, you don't think, oh, I should save this because someday when I have a success, I people will want to read. You know, you don't think mm-hmm. that. And it was on onion paper, like, which is that really thin old paper that you had back in the olden days where you couldn't um, erase it. <laughs> mm-hmm. right. So I, I, I lost it. And I, so I, I can't even really remember the story, except it was pretty generic. You know, it was like teenagers, Freddy Krueger was, a, was, you know, molesting some of them in high school and um, <laughs> the parents killed him and then he popped up in one of their dreams at the end. So, you know, for 14, it was, it was, you know, it is what it is. You know, it was like what you'd expect from a Nightmare on Elm Street prequel. Mm-hmm. How many, how many pages was it? It was like, Do you remember? I think it was like seven or eight pages. And um, yeah, Bob, Bob read it and got back to me about it. And, you know, which I'm always eternally grateful for. And I always thank him because, you know, he definitely kept me inspired and his assistant, uh, Joy Mann, who was like, she's no longer with us, unfortunately, but she was a dear friend of mine. And she would send me posters and scripts when I was in high school and college. So, you know, it really inspired me and kept me, you know, dreaming big until I, you know, moved to New York. So, you know, those things don't really, you know, those things don't really happen anymore. The world, you know, mm-hmm. kind of corporations have taken over. The movie right. business is a lot different now. So New Line, you know, was such a unique place. So it was a real, yeah, it was really cool. That Bob right. Well, that. I mean, I, and I think it's it carried on. You're a very nice guy. And, oh, no. you know, you've been horrible. <laughs> horrible, <laughs> evil person. Terrible. No. Terrible. <laughs> but I've, uh, I, I always say this, uh, that that a lot of the people that have made it, they're always a lot easier and nicer to work with than like, like you're one of the nicest guys I've ever met in the industry. Eduardo Sanchez is a friend of mine and he's, you know, just oh, yeah. a super great guy, you know, but there's so many people that are, that are up there that have done it and been through it all and, and ha- can pour it back into the people that are trying to, and that have helped everybody like that. And then I, I work with some amateurs and they're just like the egos are huge, and it's like, wow, no, mm-hmm. it's not how you do it. But it's yeah, not you... yeah, those people don't usually last. I find, especially when they're that way when they're younger. Yeah, right. they tend to burn out because you know at some point people are like, who who do I want to keep working with? You know, so you, that's I just always try to treat people well and um, honorably, and you know. Mm-hmm. Well, it's appreciated. It really Definitely. is. Did, um, is is so you you don't have any any copies of your seven page story, do you? No copies <laughs> exist. Christopher's like, are you sure? I think oh, you do. Oh gosh, I, I love scripts. <laughs> I eat scripts up, man. And uh, if I was smart, I would just go fake one. I would just go make a. Fake there you one. go. Oh, I found it. Yeah, write, write it up real quick. And, like, oh, this was great for a fourteen year old. <laughs> No, I feel that man. In the in the sixth grade, I wrote a uh, a script for a Batman and Robin that I would kill to get my hands on at this point. Yeah. And I guess it was probably more based on the uh, TV show than like all the cheesy lines from the show. And of course, at that age, all your all the lines that I think are clever 
are probably nothing but like cheesy lines anyways but um but it would have been it would have been fun to to oh. read Mm -hmm. I used to, when I was um, like 11 and 12, I would write these scripts and I always oh, yeah. said I was going to send them to Wes Craven. And so I had all these scripts that I would just, and I, I probably really sucked at it, but you know, do you remember the almanac, the, the almanac you can get like addresses oh. and studios and all that yeah. stuff. I'd look it up. I would write it out. I'm like, I'm going to send this to Wes Craven and I'm going to star in his film. I never sent him, but. <laughs> he probably would have read it. I, I, only got to meet him once. Um, I definitely wish I did. I had a chance earlier in my career, but I was t too like shy to talk to him, which was ridiculous. So Aww. it wasn't until the last house on the left remake came out that I made one of my friends <laughs> like introduce me to him. So we chatted for like 15, 20 minutes and he was just really cool. And everybody that I've talked to has had nothing, you know, but wonderful things to say about him. It's really, really a loss, you know, because mm -hmm. he definitely oh, yeah. was such an amazing filmmaker. Oh yeah. Yeah. So many films. Well, and then speaking of how you're saying the gin, did you kind of, you know how Wishmaster is a gin? Is a gin? Oh yeah. Is it yeah. kind of from that? I, mean, I never. It wasn't. It, people are going to you know compare it in a way like you well, know well not a, like that but like no no I mean but yeah no I mean I legend of it I mean yeah I see I had seen Wishmaster. Um, which is a fun movie, you know, I just, you know, for this one, I wanted to just go more serious kind of mm -hmm. psychological with it. Um, I mean, I love the Wishmaster movies though. They were so much fun. No, I'm surprised they haven't remade those. They probably will now. Cause you said it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they will. <laughs> Write it. Yeah. Write yeah. It and, uh, Get right uh, on that I, right I, now. I did, yeah, rem I did my remake um, penance with day of the dead. So um, yeah, I, I'm going to never say never, but um yeah, I'm going to try to avoid that <laughs> <laughs> and just do original stuff for a while. Mm -hmm. well, your, your originals are good. You don't have the, uh, I mean, there's not like, there's so many creative ways. You always have fun stories that allow so many ways to kill somebody or, or you know what I mean? Like, like your wishes. You, there's so many different ways that people can die due to wishes. There's so many people or so many ways that people died in the final destination films. Mm -hmm. uh, so you, I mean, you've managed to come up with these really creative ideas that can just kind of branch off into so many different things and do so many things with. It's and stick like, with people too. Right. Right. Yeah. It's not like, uh, it's not like Jason Voorhees. You've got one killer that's yeah. coming at you. Like, you don't know what the hell's going to kill you in one of your stories. Mm -hmm. You don't yeah, know like, what's going to kill you at all. You try. I mean, that's the thing. I try to have fun with it because I watch so many horror. I mean, I, I, you know, as much as any horror geek, I've seen as many films. So I try to either come up with something I haven't seen before or at least a spin on something. Um, so it's always, I, for me, it's always fun trying to come up with the kills because it's like, what can I do to make this a little different, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. What was I don't your like killing favorite? people in real life. Just, just on yeah. film. Yeah, yeah, real life, <laughs> totally no. fake. No. Yeah. <laughs> you don't like killing people in real life. It hurt. I mean, it sucks. Doing it, but... <laughs> it's not his favorite thing to do. <laughs> yeah, it's not my favorite thing to do. But if it's like, you know, if I'm quarantined, you know, get a little cabin fever, you know, what am I going to do about it? <laughs> yeah, right. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> what were you going to ask? Clip. Oh, geez. No, and we, and we all have it on video. <laughs> Watching Sorry, it pulled out of the house. I was going to ask, I cut you off. Oh, um, you were going to ask him what his favorite, you said, what's your favorite? I was going to ask him, we, since we were on the Nightmare on Elm Street, we're on the Nightmare on Elm Street kind of theme tonight with, uh, with this, I was going to ask him what his favorite part <laughs> from a Nightmare on Elm Street was. Is there oh. something in that that really stuck with you? I mean, so much of the first movie stuck with me because I'd never seen anything like it. I mean, Killing Tina was like, blew my mind. I was like, ah, oh, what, what, you know? Um, I probably reacted more cool than that when I was 14. <laughs> um, but um, no, the Killing Tina stuff was amazing. But I think every one of those set pieces is like amazing. Like I just, mm -hmm. and you know, I fell in love with Nancy. Like I always go off on this all the time, but I think Nancy was like, she's a, the, she's always been my favorite final girl because I think of, you know, and this is just more in the writing than anything else. It's not because of the, you know, I'm not dissing into the actresses that play other final girls, but you know, Nancy was like the first final girl that I ever saw that like 
started researching and came up with a plan and like booby trapped her house and went in after mm -hmm. Freddie to pull him out and beat the crap out of him. Cause most of the final girls up until then, you know, they ran and they fell and you know, mm -hmm. and I love Jamie Curtis in Halloween, but if you look at it, she runs and she falls and she right. stabs him once and then she cries and then she stabs him <laughs> again. And she's a great actress. I adore her so much. Um, mm -hmm. But um, you know, Nancy was like a, proactive like i'm gonna go get this fucker and kill him mm -hmm. final girl so she's like you know that movie was just for me groundbreaking on so many levels it just really and johnny depp and half shirt i mean you oh, can't go yeah. wrong with it. Yes. <laughs> can't yes. go wrong with it. <laughs> <laughs> i was very yeah. bummed he died <laughs> yes i was like oh and he's calling for his mom it makes it it's awful <laughs> i know no apparently yeah. in in the room there was a rotating set yeah. And I guess the first time that they did it, it rotated the wrong way. And the yeah. blood and shit went all over the film equipment. Oh, man. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's crazy. Another that's thing that sad. I learned was that um, apparently, and, and I, I didn't realize this, it never actually shows Freddy kill anybody in the first one. You never see his blades, like, injure yeah. anybody. Yeah. That's... That that happens in part two, the first time you actually see Freddy kill somebody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. I had never even put that together. I didn't it's, either. Yeah. But yeah, it's an yeah. amazing film. That's it is. Amazing. It's really, really, really good. And the uh the ending, I guess, um, Wes Craven didn't Wes Craven wanted to end the second that Nancy turned her back. And that was Wes Craven. That's when they should have. That's when they should have ended it. And I know they. I know the studio made them tack on the, the other ending for um, a sequel. Um, but for me, it was like, yeah, she got through all that, and then you're just going to have her get like killed anyway. Like so that I don't like. That's the only part I don't. That's the part, only part that bums me out. But um, yeah, I think it should have ended when she turned her back on him. <laughs> Did yeah. you see the? Uh... I guess there was uh, the extras. I guess it was a cut. It was a cut scene. Rihanna and I were talking about this, and I had no idea about this. But they had cut out a scene in where it, it shows the mother talking with uh, with Nancy, and it's like, "Well, he'll never hurt you again." And she reaches into the chimney and pulls out the hat. Oh yeah, and you have and a sister. You had a, a sister or brother. I forgot one. Yeah, right. Yeah, I saw those things. I actually, um, when I was working at New Line, I found like a canister or, or a box with VHS tapes with some of those scenes and watched them. So it was pretty That's cool. cool. Yeah. Wow. What do they say about New Line? Did they, is, do they call New Line the house that Freddie built? Yes. Person. That's cool. Yeah, the house that Freddie built. Um, and it, yeah, and it, it, it was, I mean, that was their first big breakout hit. Um, and they, but they maximized it. I mean, you know, back in its heyday, New Line was, you know, with, with Bob and Mike DeLuca and that team, like it couldn't be big. Like they put out such, you know, they put out Blade, House Party, um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Dumb and Dumber. They just, they put out movies like that no other studio would think would ever make a profit. Mm -hmm. And they would put them out. Like they were very risk they were much very much risk takers back in the day which was amazing to kind of grow up in that studio environment or you know mini studio environment it was called it was called a mini major um but to grow up in that environment where people weren't afraid to take risks was amazing and now it's like everything has to be like an ip or based on you know it's like the business has changed so much um oh, yeah so it's it was nice to kind of it's kind of nice to live in those heydays yeah when original when original ideas and and scripts were like people would take chances on them it was really cool mm -hmm. well hopefully hopefully people are discovering new films right now while they're trapped inside their houses with <laughs> yeah. nothing but their their internet searching for stuff to watch and, and stuff to do so i hope that they take the opportunity to you know look up your work and and other works and and stuff that isn't quite I don't know how to explain the big, big Hollywood stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Have they talked about a remake of Final Destination at all? Is that? Um, they're doing, um, they're calling it a reboot. Um, so they're definitely working on a, on another one. Um, from what I know about it, I, it's, I wouldn't, it's not a, re, it's, you know, they're not retelling the first story. 
um, they're just telling a different story. But you know, it's gonna it's enough, it's gonna be cool. Like from what I when I've what I've heard about it, you know, it's it's it yeah, it's gonna be cool. <laughs> you can't say much, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, would it be anything that you're, are you writing on it or is this, is somebody else uh, no, writing? No, I'm not writing on it. I'm just, yeah, I'm, I'm working on some other stuff, but um, I just, I'm, you know, very good friends with Craig Perry. So I kind of stay in touch with him and, you know, I love the franchise a lot. I would, I, you know, I'd kind of love to come back and, you know, do something different with it, you know, cause I think death is, but then you don't really want to do something different with it because the whole kind of Rube Goldberg way that death gets you, which is something that James Wong and Glenn Morgan came up with um, when they came on the project. Um, that's really what gets people, you know, not so much the how, mm -hmm. when it happens, but yeah, looking around like how it's going to happen. So mm -hmm. um, it's kind of one of those things. It's like, you know, I, all of my ideas are like, you know, Oh, death could have another like MO the way it gets people instead of this, like that would be fun to explore. But I know kind of the mechanics of movie business is you don't want to, you know, break something or fix something if it's not broken. So, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's if if you had to, if if somebody was absolutely brand new to your work, is Final Destination the film that you would send them to, or is there some other thing that you've that you've got that you're like, this is my actual goal. It's just undiscovered but this is what I want you to see. What, we, what is your favorite piece that, that you've written? Um, that's a tough one, you know, because obviously now all my friends are going to be like, screw you. That worked on the other movies. Right. Um, no, you know what? I, I, I think the movie that I, the one in it, my only complaint about it is it was a script that Lionsgate was going to put out. And then the producers that came on and financed it decided to kind of water it down. And, take a lot of the like edge and grit out of it and the, some of the sexual stuff and some of the violence they took out. Um, so it didn't quite turn out like I'd wanted it to turn out, but I have a soft spot for Tamara. Um, oh, I, I remember I that really, one. Yeah. Like that one I think mm -hmm. is that one. Yeah. It, Cause it, you know, it's, I've always loved Carrie, you know, my, I always joke like my only thing about Carrie is I hate you have to wait till the end of the movie for her to kill everybody. So, <laughs> you know, this was obviously, you know, I was bullied as a kid. Most of us, not you know, most of us were. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it was a fun, it was a way to, I wanted to write something that was kind of a fun movie for me to write, like with everything I'd want to see on screen in it. Um, they took a lot of the stuff out that I wrote in it. Um, but it's funny, me and John Doyle, who wrote Final Wish, wrote a novelization of Tamara that ha that's based off the script that has all the stuff in it from the original script. But um, I think that movie... It's it has all the elements of all the stuff that I kind of do. It's got some cool kills and it's funny and scary and sexy. So Tamara, I I really enjoy. Um, you know, but you know, you are I I even enjoy Day of the Dead. Too. You know, like I know people. You know, I think if it wasn't called Day of the Dead, it, people yeah. would think it's a fun zombie movie. I right. wish it wasn't called Day of the Dead because we ended up changing it so much after I got hired. Um, but I think that's a fun movie, but Tamara, I think Tamara's like the sweet spot, but you know, mm -hmm. you learn, you love all your movies. I mean, I love, um, you know, Dead Awake and The Final Wish, yes. um, Return like to Kevin by the Lake, my TV movie that I wrote. That's the only one that makes me cry. Um, <laughs> oh, <Aww. laughs> no, because it's, it's, um, the, the, I wrote it and, um, you know, you know, and I wrote a really strong script and then at the very last minute after they brought the actor and director back, they decided to have somebody in house. It was for a TV network for USA back mm -hmm. in the day. And they decided to have somebody in house, like kind of dumb it down. Cause they said it was too clever for their audience. Oh. And then the director, I think, I don't know if he was happy or whatever, but he almost directed it like a comedy. So it's just a weird movie. It's just a weird, <laughs> strange <laughs> movie. And it's, that's one that makes me really sad because it's like the you know, um yeah that that one is i think all the rest people there are fans of return to cabin by the lake so i and i'm again grateful to have that a movie made so i try not to to talk bad about any things that i've had made but um that one made me cry a little bit but um 
the rest of them I'm, I'm, you know, even if some of them didn't turn out to be like exactly how I'd written it, um, I think they're all solid in their own special way, you know. Mm -hmm. Tamara, you said that uh, now it's available in book form. Is it available in book form or just? Uh... Oh, it's a, yeah, the, it's a movie. Jenna Dewan was in it. Um, amazing. Um, Matthew Marsden, who's been in a lot of stuff, was in it. Uh, Chad Faust. Um, yeah, it's like you can find it online. Um, well, no, I actually, can, I actually own the DVD. Okay, yeah, so you can get it there, but the book is online, you know, as a book or digital. Okay, um, so, yeah. so you can get it in book form, not just Oh, digital. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. I thought you said is it only in book form. Oh, yeah, digi digi you can get it digitally, yeah. All right, well, I, I, like, I like books. Yeah. I like books, I like DVDs, I like records, I like stuff that I can hold in my hand. Like you know, school. I like the art. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't let that stuff go i probably never will probably yeah, never yeah. will so with um dead awake billy blair is a friend of yes. mine i didn't realize oh, that he cool. had played dr i don't remember the name dr well, hassan yeah hassan okay yeah because i had seen it and then i was talking to him and he's like oh yeah did you see dead awake i'm like yeah he's like oh that was me i was like no way he, he was so amazing like i remember yeah. when they shot that scene of him breaking down like everybody in the crew we were all like, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. he brought it he was great yeah i'll tell him yeah. i said hi <laughs> definitely yeah i will um, yeah he's amazing he's awesome he's doing a lot of stuff now yeah fun fact on that one we'd um we'd i have a big mouth um no we cast <laughs> we, we cast the guy from avatar to to play that role and um and he showed up on set and, you know, that character is supposed to be like one foot in the grave, like about to die any minute. And the, the actor shows up on set and he'd been vacationing. So he was tanned and he shaved his beard and he just, he looked like he literally because we were all tired from pre-production stuff. He mm -hmm. looked healthier than anybody in the casting crew. <laughs> and um, we were, tried for two days to shoot with him and we were like, can we just put bags under your eyes or something? And he was so different. He's like, no, I'm tired of people making me look ugly in movies. And I'm like, did you read the script? And oh they, my so they gosh. had to fire him like the second day. And Dang. Um, luckily we found Billy. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> did you guys have to put out like a casting call or how did you nope. find him? Um, I'm not sure how they found, how they found Billy. I just know that they fired him like while we were shooting <laughs> like oh, the second shit. day and yeah. And just reshuffled some stuff around and recast him. Damn. Like, the other guy. Himself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're finding somebody new. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And they're like, we're not flying you home either. You pay your own way home. <laughs> really? Oh, oh wow. yeah. Like he's yeah, probably a jerk. You, yeah. Just in that maybe we caught him on a bad day. So well still. Speaking of, of, act like that. <laughs> of people that coincidentally did things, I didn't realize that the guy in um Dr. King in a nightmare on Elm Street. I can't I, I had his name written down. I can't think of his name. But he is also the guy that voiced Roger Rabbit, among oh, like mm -hmm. many, many other things. Yeah, the guy that played the dream specialist is yeah. also the voice of Roger Rabbit. Oh, that's so funny. I didn't yeah, know that. It's like, you know more than I do. I don't like that. I didn't believe it you know when I saw it. I was like, 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 wait a minute. Mm. <laughs> that's why it's we're all here to learn a thing or two. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, I looked it up, and the, I mean, he has done so much work. Like mm -hmm. he does, it, like Lynn, like Lynn Shay. You see her in doing that small role in A Nightmare on Elm Street, and then you see her resume, and it's like boom. Yeah. You know, she's done so much stuff. And that guy was the same way. It was like he does all these voices. He's been on all these shows. He's done so much, so much stuff. And uh, Robert England. Uh, is another one. I mean, my first experience with Robert England was way before Nightmare on Elm Street. My father was big into sci-fi, and there was a series that came on called V. Oh, that's my favorite TV series of all time. Oh my oh, cool. god, that yeah. show scared yeah. that when he pulls his face off and you realize that he's a like the lizard alien. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, v is basically my TV version of Nightmare on Elm Street. Like that's my favorite. Nightmare was my favorite movie. V's my favorite show. I actually got Jane Badler to be in my short. Um, I did a short version of this feature I just directed called Get Samaritan. And um, she lived in Australia and I just fanboyed her on Twitter. I'm like, I, no, it was Facebook, I think. And I'm like, 
this is going to be really weird, but I, here's my resume and I've been a big fan of yours. And would you do my short? And she's like, of course. <laughs> um, she was nice. the sweetest person. And so I, I, you know, had the pleasure of meeting her years ago and we've been like, we've gotten really close and she's a wonderful, she's another just wonderful lady. Um, amazing. But it was, yeah, that's the just, yeah. Well, I need to watch it. For, rock my world too oh yeah you yeah. absolutely have to watch yeah. that i'm really i'm surprised you haven't like you've never heard of you i don't think i have no wow that's when I did it come out surprised. yeah that's it don't see now that now that comes out well it came out in like 80, 84 <laughs> so were, were you born then <laughs> but she's my age I was like, she's no i'm not how old are you you i'm 43 you i mean you're not that much younger than me. i'm 36 <laughs> she's like, well, I had to think for a minute. Wait, how old am I? Yeah, you. I'm 36. You, yeah, but you, you all were still like I was in high school when that came out, so you all were still yeah. like kid kids. I mean, I right. watched Nightmare well, on Elm Street when I was five. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> I saw awful. that that early. I don't think I saw that. That would have scared the shit out of me. It scared the shit out of me. It. <laughs> yeah, five. I honestly don't even remember the first one scaring me as a kid. Like I couldn't tell you when I saw the first one. Mm -hmm. But I remember seeing the second one as a kid, and it just terrifying me. And uh, yeah. so I, I, I don't know if I saw the first one before the second one or, or what, but the second one is really the one that, that is stuck in my head as far as being scared of a nightmare on, on Elm Street. Now, I... Uh, this is... I, so I know that, that all of us have got a nightmare on Elm Street in our history, when I was in sixth grade, I was the weatherman on the school, uh, the, the school little news station. Mm -hmm. And I've been acting since I was a very small kid. So I've always, you know, I took a million classes. I took a lot of stuff. And I used to do a lot of impersonations. And they would let me come on to the show and do impersonations of people. I didn't realize till much later that like basically everybody I was doing was from rated R movies. So I can only wonder what the <laughs> teachers thought, you know, about like my parents, like what's wrong, what's with, wrong those with those kids? <laughs> but, right. but they went on, they, they allowed me to come on there as Freddy Krueger. So I was a sixth grader that went on to a school news show as Freddy Krueger. The gloves hadn't come out yet, so I, I made gloves out of, I took cardboard and tin foil, and, uh, you know, I took a work glove and cut a hole in the, in the center and taped it all up, and did something <laughs> like, you like, you know, the sound, making the sound effects, because they don't have sound yeah. effects, and it's like, the weather for all your kitties is, you know, or piggies or, or whatever. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> crazy, crazy. Um, <laughs> Freddie also turned into, now this is from my son's generation, my, when my son came home from school one day, I have a six foot tall animatronic Freddy Krueger. Oh, Whoa, and, that's cool. Yeah, I really, yeah, uh, when my son would come and stay with me, you know, uh, you know, I, I have my son on weekends and during the summer, back, mm -hmm. and my son's 21 now, so he's off in college, probably going to watch this being like, God, Dad, why are you talking you about me? Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> why do you bring these things up? But, uh, no, he, he came back and, uh, it's, you know, we've got Candyman getting ready to come out. So this story is, it's kind of interesting, rel interestingly relevant, but he started talking about Freddy Krueger and he was probably, you know, really young and probably maybe the fourth grade or something like that, maybe, you know, around then. And I'm like, what do you know about Freddy Krueger? He's like, don't say his name. And I was like, <laughs> Why? <laughs> Well, if you say Freddy Krueger three times, <laughs> Freddy uh... Krueger will kill you in your dreams. And I'm like, <laughs> we need That's... to have a son. Uh, we need yes. to have a son, Hawk. We need to have a talk, son. So I explained to him, you know, about theater and film and Bloody Mary and Candyman and how all these stories came to be. And then I pulled the six foot tall animatronic Freddy Krueger out of the clock and traumatized came out him. Of the clock. <laughs> and well I mean it was like we took pictures of him beating up Freddy Krueger. <laughs> <laughs> so while everybody else is terrified of Freddy Krueger, all the friends are terrified of Freddy Krueger. He's got pictures punching of him, like, punching <laughs> Freddy Krueger in the face because it's no big deal. It's just a movie. It's not, you know, it's just a dream, it isn't real. Yeah. It's just a dream, <laughs> it isn't real. 
I know the uh, one part that really scared me was the tendons. Um, I can't remember. Was that three or four? Oh, part three. Yeah. Part three, huh? Yeah. No, I did cool. not like that part. I mean, it was good, but it's, it, ugh. it was gruesome. Ugh. It was yeah, painfully gruesome. It's all walking in. <laughs> <laughs> three. They, uh, they, well, I mean, that's, I feel like those movies could have been written by you because they do. It, it goes into so many different categories of how people can die and uh, different ways, different fun ways, that, fun ways that you can kill people. Yeah, yeah there's lots of fun ways. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it definitely had an influence on me. I mean, it not I think it definitely had an influence on me as far as kind of writing fantasy horror. Mm -hmm. Have you got any other books out? Um, that's the only one. That's the only one. Uh, book writing is hard. <laughs> it's, it's a lot harder for, um, than screenwriting for me. Cause it's, you know, you just, you have to really get into people's internal thought process where in films you have to, it's all external stuff that you see. Um, and so I just have ADD. So it's hard for me to like write like prose as much. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I've written some short stories when I was younger, but I'm, yeah, I'm, I don't think, um, unless I have another, you know, it, John was a you know was a great writing partner you know for novel stuff but it's just I don't know if I have the the time for it or, or patience mm -hmm. um, it's like I'd rather write a script. See, and I think writing script is hard. I would prefer to write a book than script. Oh, that's interesting. Like, I mean, I read mm -hmm. so many books growing up. Um, it's just I, the, I think it's the patience thing. Like, you know, I. I've lost a lot of my patience. Yeah. So I think writing like people's internal thought stuff is just, that would, it would probably be a good exercise. Um, I need to probably stretch my creative muscles a little bit. So <laughs> I should probably try that. <laughs> try it. Yeah. Try it and let us read it. Rhiannon, yeah. Rhiannon does have a, a book out. I have two uh, books out. Mm -hmm. Two books out. Sorry. Two books out. Right. I have two. My, and my <laughs> third one's coming out in January. It's all in a series, um, but it's paranormal fiction. Oh, that's awesome. What's the yeah. title of it? Um, the first one is Broken Halo, and then the second one is Broken Halo Blood Curse. And then the oh, cool. third one is Broken Halo Witches Game. That one will be out. That's the one that will come out in January. Oh, that's so awesome. Um, yeah, send me, tweet me about it, and I'll get okay. the books and read about it. Awesome. That's Thank awesome. you. No, I love reading new stuff, so... Cool! Yay! Okay. Well, let, let me uh, let me close this out real fast. Let me. We had we actually had a sponsor for this. So uh, oh, cool. If, oh, yeah. I, if I could just say <laughs> say this, uh, Reluctant Zero is a hard rock band from Woodbridge, Virginia, that you can check out at www.facebook.com slash Reluctant Zero Band on Spotify, Spotify, <laughs> iTunes, YouTube. Uh, the brand new world premiere, their new video for the song Too Dark comes out Monday, March 30th at 1 p.m. Nice. You can check out their live stream show on the Facebook page at April on April 5th at 4 p.m. EST, Eastern Standard Time. They just had the highest rated local band uh, show ever on 93.3 FM. The Rise Guys the Rise Guys show brutally honest music reviews. So if you guys get the chance. Check that what, was out. Your, what was your name one more time? Reluctant Zero. Awesome. Reluctant Zero. Shout out to Michigan. I know, yeah, Michigan's going through some stuff right now too, but um, lots of talented people down there. So I'll check that out too. Nice. Rock and roll. Well, Jeffrey, thank you so much. I have, I have been looking so forward to doing this interview with Me you. Me too. Oh, thank you. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's been so hard. It's like, yeah, no, it's just my schedule gets crazy and, you know, I appreciate your all's patience. <laughs> oh, no, thank you. We appreciate you coming enough. on. And, um, yeah, I'm like, I joked earlier before we started, like I'm rocking the coronavirus quarantine stash, you know, beard here because I haven't shaved. So I'm like Grizzly Adams. So <laughs> I was like, oh, Got locked away in your awful. house. <laughs> is, there a, is there a filter that I could put on here to make me look like, um, who do I want to look? The Rock. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Like the Snapchat filters. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Just make me a celebrity. <laughs> That's funny. But, um, awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, and, thank um, you so much. And just real quick, um, is there any anybody that you want to thank or anywhere for that you want people to find you? Um, you just mentioned Twitter, and I think I'm following oh, yeah. you on there. Um, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter at Jeffrey A Reddick. 
R A D D. That's just my name. Um, <laughs> and you can follow me on Instagram. I'm not much of an Instagrammer because it's more of a visual thing and it's like I'm writing all the time. So it's like, how many interesting pictures going to be like, here's me writing here <laughs> in, at Starbucks. Um, and People I'm would love here. that though. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I should just do that. A photo series. You should. Um, yeah, so Twitter's great. Um, Twitter's probably the best, but um, at some point I'll probably start Instagramming more as I'm because I'm getting more into directing. And um, yeah, I just directed my first um, feature, Good Samaritan. So we're in post on that. We're about wrapped up. So we'll I'll keep you posted on what's going on with that. And um, oh, I, yeah, I, I thought you would send me a link to Good Samaritan uh, a little while back. You weren't supposed. That to was say a that. short. I'm just kidding. No, that was. <laughs> oh, oh that was, okay, okay. That was that was a short. No, that was a short. <laughs> yeah, that was the, I did the short, but then I did a feature version of that as well. Right. I got Jesus. I just I could have almost just destroyed everything. Yeah. <laughs> Let's keep that. your mouth shut. Yeah. Jeez. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so real quick, I want to thank Crazy Ink Publishing for taking on my books. Um, Matthew Price Thompson with MPT Graphics, who does the artwork for the show. Uh, Chris Atella, who does the um, some of the intro music, outro music, and then um, just little snippets of music that I use for promotional purposes. Um, my indie productions for, um, they are, they're amazing. They help all kinds of indie artists, um, directors, actors, producers, musicians. They're just, they're a great group. They're on Facebook and they also have, um, a website. So I'm a featured artist on there. Um, also Johnny daggers for doing my logo and intro music. Um, Horror with Sir Sturdy. Check him out. He's a podcaster too. So he is who started me podcasting. Um, and then Bud Vino, he's another podcaster, radio host, and just a super good friend. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I'm going to send a shout out to my sister, Shana Reddick. She probably will never listen to this podcast, but she lives in Kentucky and I like embarrassing her because she's <laughs> adorable and I love her. Oh, good. <laughs> this is a fun show to I'll embarrass send her the link. On. Oh, oh, oh. Send the link and tag her. <laughs> You're the cat. Oh. oh, she's hiding. Yeah, I got a new cat. But um, yeah, she's she's great, but she's like been hiding under the bed. So oh, um, I'll have to, camera shy. I'll, I'll introduce her to the world at probably on t Instagram. <laughs> there you go. Your first picture. There we go. <laughs> Animals and writing. Yeah. <laughs> writing in front of my cat. There you go. <laughs> and then Christopher, where can right. we find you? Facebook.com slash Christopher Inlow. You can pick up a copy of the new coloring book, the Slow Frank Meets Faith No More Coloring Book at www.slowfrankandfriends.com. And yes, it is authorized by Faith No More. Uh, yeah, oh, cool. you can. Uh, there it is. You can find me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Twitter at at Chris Inlow and uh, Instagram Christopher Inlow. And that's that's what I do. I have a lot of work that's con constantly putting more stuff out and constantly trying to keep things going. So please check it out and uh, check Rhiannon out. And Jeffrey Riddick is always putting out much cooler stuff than me. No, and no, no. <laughs> it's all it's all cool stuff. It's it's all diff it's all cool and it's all unique and it's all different, but it's all great. So. And everybody knows it and everybody loves it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're kind of a big and deal. Do like me after this and go pick up a copy of his book, Camera, and pick up a copy of Rhiannon's book. Because I will definitely be picking up a copy that as soon as we get done with here, I am going straight to the I, I saw you posted a link to it. So I will be going there and, and trying to figure out where I can get the book copy of that. Me too. Oh, awesome. awesome. Yeah, it's on, it's on Amazon, um, but the show, I just tried to order something from Amazon. It's like shipping late May or June. I'm like, oh okay, my I'll, just walk to, I'll just walk to the store and get that. Jeez, <laughs> so, this is yeah. crazy. Yeah. Well, can well, I pick that up in any store? Oh, um, no, it, it's, it came out, it came out a couple, like years ago. So it's like, I mean, I'm not, you might be able to find it at like an a used bookstores. Um, and they're all closed. Oh yeah. I just probably <laughs> just ordered so it from Amazon and get it in June. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> McKay's bookstore in Manassas is 
No, no, they weren't open. Oh, man. What's wrong with you guys? I thought you were yeah. open one day. I was going to shout out to them out there, but uh, but no. Mm, dang it. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on. It's really been an honor. Of course. And I just, I really appreciate it. You were so much no, fun. No, it's, <laughs> it's my pleasure. My pleasure. You all have a great night, okay? You too. You we'll too. talk to you soon. Take care. Okay, bye.